Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist D.T. from WeatherWest.com, the colonel of chaos, the camp, commander of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's uh, actually now February 17th. It's uh, 12.30 here in the east, 9.30 uh, west coast time. A lot to talk about in This Week in Weather. This is the first one we had a chance to do in a couple of weeks because the storms have been so frequent and so large that uh, I just simply have not had a chance to do the videos and take care of clients and update the Facebook page and, and, and. So uh, as much as I really enjoy doing the videos, each one of the videos takes about three hours to do. I have to you know, download the maps, and I have to arrange them, and then uh, put some graphics on the maps, and then... Uh, edit the maps and then do the video and then upload the video so it can take two to three hours to do and I try and keep within a certain time frame but you know stuff happens so let's get right to it in this topic we will talk about a we'll review the February 12th and 13th really February 13th and 14th hex the historic East Coast snowstorm we'll talk about the brief light snow event coming Monday night and Tuesday the pattern breaking down and a couple of mild days, four or five days, or rather mild temperatures in the eastern U.S. Then the pattern reamplifies and the potential for two events, one February 23rd, 24th, and then a bigger one uh, for the uh, more like the mid-Atlantic states and the Tennessee Valley, February 25, 26. So lots of talk about. Let's get right to it. Now, this is the pattern so going into February 12th. And we have some interesting things to talk about here. When we were doing, I did a radio show with the Capital Weather Gang. Uh, there was some talk that this really was not a great uh, East, uh, East Coast snowstorm pattern. And uh, I, did, I didn't agree with that. One of the things that I pointed out is that, was that this feature here, the 50-50 low, is very strong over to Funland. You can see that. And we had a split in the jet stream. This was your southern jet. This was your northern jet. And the two features were going to phase. We had a little bit of a ridging here. Uh, we did not have a west coast ridge at all. We had a strong Pacific flow. But you don't have to have that for an east coast snowstorm. That helps. But there are other ways of getting around it. On the other hand, um, the Arctic Oscillation was uh, only neutral. And the NAO was uh, quite positive. So one thing we did have is this huge ridge up in here going across the uh, Arctic region from uh, the Bering Sea all the way through the Arctic North Pole into Scandinavia and Central Russia. But the Arctic Oscillation was neutral. The NAO was positive. So I'll go neutral here and we'll go positive there. But we still got the snowstorm. And one of the things I want to point out here is that when we took these things to get a snowstorm, having the Arctic Oscillation negative, having the NAO negative, having a West Coast Ridge, having the trough axis, the certain alignment, having the 50-50 low, you can get a big snowstorm on the East Coast without those things. But it's never going to be the ideal, classic, pure snowstorm. And in fact, this wasn't. Remember, this system was so close to the coast that many places in New Jersey and New York, Connecticut, Long Island went over to rain for hours and hours and hours on end. So that's something you want to keep in mind. If we had those features in place, the February 12th, 13th, and 14th storm would have been all snow for everybody. And it wasn't, and that's one of the reasons. Now this is the jet stream map for the time frame, and again we can see this is for as of the uh, uh, February, I believe this is February 13th here, and uh, we can see a very distinct uh, features here. The red blue line shows a split in the jet stream, so we can see that very nicely here. Uh, this here's the um, southern jet, this here's our northern jet coming in this way, and there's our 50-50 low, see it right here, okay? And then we have our short wave coming this way and the other one down here. And the two features were going to merge. And that's what led to the big snowstorm on the East Coast, so the big winter storm. And we can see the fact, look at the trough axis right here. Look at this. It's negatively tilted, very strongly negatively tilted. And the energy coming in here, that's dropping in. That's coming in this way as well. So uh, the 50-50 low is now gone, but, but we have a big East Coast snowstorm. And notice the Arctic Oscillation is not great. There's no negative NAO. There's no big West Coast ridge. But the phasing occurred at just the right time, and everything worked out and came into place. This is the surface map. And again, remember, many of the models were further to the east. Only the European model showed this for 14 or 15 straight model runs in a row had the low this close to the coast. Remember, the, G the GFS and the Canadian especially were out here somewhere, you know, they, and, and they were showing more snow in the northeast than actually fell and no rain. And that turned out to be completely wrong. Notice where the high was. The high is over here. So as a result, with the low coming up this way, you're getting a southeast wind, and that forced in New England and, and New York City and New Jersey over to rain. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania and Maryland and Virginia had huge amounts of snow. So that was another issue. And we can take a look here at the snow maps. This is a great snow map. You can see it very nicely. 
And again, you know, Central Virginia, we see six to eight, nine inches of snow here. Huge snows of, uh, you know, and this is over uh, 12th to the 13th and 14th. There's tremendous snows uh, over two feet in many places in the Shenandoah Valley up into Central Maryland. And then again in the Catskills. Very impressive snow event. And again, look, not much over in Boston and so on and so forth because of the rain here. Also right here in this area as well. So. Now, let's take a look at the current pattern as of February 16th, and you can see not a whole lot going on here. We have a very zonal flow, as you can see. The pattern is doing essentially this. A little bit of a trough here, but uh, we still have our ridge up here very nicely. The ridge is still holding together at the high latitudes up in here. Uh, but uh, this is essentially a zonal flow, and as a result, the pattern breaks down, the cold air gets shut off, and we turn mild. Now, this is the event coming in Monday night, Tuesday, the 4-kilometer NAM, moderate snow in the northeast. I know a lot of media stations want to play it up. Oh, no, another snowstorm. But, okay, it's not really. The 4-kilometer NAM, which is probably too heavy with the precipitation. This here is the 84-hour uh, uh, NAM. I think the previous one was the, uh, you know, the both of them. And then um, this here is, I believe, the RGM, if I'm not mistaken. Let me take a look. See. Uh, yes, it is. This is the RGM as well. And it's got a lot less snow. And the RGM has just been kicking butt, taking names all winter. So, uh, this is probably the right connection here. An inch or two of snow, some places three or four. Not a big deal. Now, as we go further out in time here, this is for February 18th after the snow event. And we can see what's going on here very nicely. The flow is now zonal, straight across this way. All the cold air is locked up in here, as you can see. There's no west coast ridge at all. It's just a straight zonal flow and temperatures are quite mild. And that's the way it's going to be. And that allows temperatures to warm up. Now, starting on the 20th of February, we begin to see a bit of a trough here in the eastern United, here in the Midwest. Actually, I guess it's the Rockies. And that actually forces the ridge to pop up a little bit here in this direction. And that's going to be the first event which is going to come through, through the upper plains, really the upper Midwest, and bring some rain and snow for that area and bring up warm temperatures for us. These are the max temperatures on Thursday. Look in Richmond in the 60s. Now to the north where they have a lot more heavy snow cover, temperatures are going to be in the 30s and the 40s for a couple of days. But again, look at these readings up in here. Wow, these are impressive stuff. And again, this is all because of the snow cover right in this area, keeping temperatures a bit cooler. And this is the next one. I believe this is for... Um, yeah, for Friday afternoon, if we do get 60s up into almost to Philly now at this point, 60s into D.C. and Richmond and Raleigh and Charlotte. And uh, But look at the cold air coming in here, folks. So this is interesting. The cold air is coming back, back in here. So um, then by the time we get to the end of the week, let's take a look at our teleconnection. Now, the Arctic Oscillation, again, look at our storm for February 13th. Yeah, let's take a look at it right there. That's right here. Actually, quite a little on the positive side. But if we look at the trend, it's almost neutral. Some ensembles do this, some ensembles do that. No strong signal from the Arctic Oscillation at all. Okay? If we look at our NAO trend, generally positive, slightly positive, not a strong signal here. If we look at the EPO, now this is interesting. The EPO, of course, is uh, strongly positive right here, as you can see. And then it drops down and goes negative. And the Western Pacific Oscillation is neutral all the way through. And not surprising, when the EPO drops like that, the, the P&A changes. So the P&A goes goes way down here as you can see and then shoots back up again and comes back down again up and down up and down so a very big pattern change is coming up here over the next two weeks now this is uh, February 21st now here's our Midwest storm remember we talked about that one before up in the Great Lakes right here and uh, we get a bit of a cold front coming through this way still very warm in the eastern United States but this ridge is beginning to develop it's beginning to amplify here again and that's causing the pattern to shift and this is going to be uh, the surface map for day six on the European, Saturday, uh, February 22nd. The lows in Arkansas, but look where the front is. This is a Midwest snowstorm, okay? This is a big snowstorm for the Midwest all up in this area in here. Oops. This area in here, it's, this is a big, pretty big snowstorm coming. This is rain for everybody in here, but the, over the Midwest, that's a pretty good snowstorm if that develops as such. And if we look at it, uh, this is the GFS, same sort of thing, a little different. It's got the load a little faster, and then the cold air comes in behind it, but the, that's in Pennsylvania. That's a rainstorm for everybody in the Northeast, except for the far western mountains. And again, this is a snowstorm for the Midwest as well. Now, this is the European for day seven for the 23rd. If you remember, look where it was here before. Okay, we had the low in Arkansas, right? Now look where it is. Okay, it's over New York City. And that means the low tracks does this. It goes from here to this. Now, that's not an East Coast snowstorm track at all. That's a Midwest and Ohio Valley track. That's what that is. And that makes sense because we're going to be too warm anyway, so it might as well be a Midwest snowstorm, right? Okay, then as we clear this out and go to the next map, 
and this is the uh, G this is the European now day uh, eight. And look what's happening here. We're getting ridge forming up in here. This trough is coming down again this way. The pattern's beginning to shift and it's beginning to reamplify up and down, up and down with this pattern. Now this is the uh, GFS here at day eight, and you can see that it has a little bit of a low. Let me call it my market here, right here, which which is reintroducing the Arctic air this way. This is all Arctic air coming down here. You can see it just like in this, okay? And uh, so this is going to swing through, and that's going to unleash the Arctic air on the GFS, and the European agrees with that. They clearly show the Arctic air coming back in February 23rd, 24th. Now, this is the European at day 10. Look at this enormous ridge. Oh, my gosh. Going up this way, and look at this huge trough and some sort of low developing on the coast. So this is a classic East Coast snowstorm pattern, or pretty close to one. And this is what the European does. This is the Sunday afternoon European. You can see the... Uh, uh, Arctic front very clearly right through here, or Texas is cold, and then the first wave, and here's the high, Arctic high, look at this thing, look at the winds coming southward, driving this thing, and then here's the Arctic low, there's the low here, developing along the Gulf Coast, and then bombing the hell out of North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, that's what that looks like, this does not look like a New England snowstorm, based on the European, it's very far out of time, folks, but that's what it looks like, and notice again, look where the high is, Texas. Having the high drop to Texas is not a good sign for a northeast snowstorm. It's a good sign for a Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, West Virginia snowstorm, but not for the northeast. That's if it holds. I have no idea. But the trough shaping up that deep, it looks like the high is going to drop that far south. And look at the day nine pattern. All the models have this enormous ridge here. You can all see it right here. Here's the GFS with the ridge. Here's the European with the ridge. Here's the Canadian. Look at the trough. Boom, boom, boom. Something's coming around the end of the month. There's no doubt about that. And this is the European at day 10. You can see the ensembles, the massive trough, the huge amount of cold air coming in by February 26th. Oops, that shouldn't have happened. Huh? And then this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the GFS from early this morning. It had some sort of storm here off the East Coast on February 28th. And then the uh, afternoon one does the same sort of thing, takes it up the coast again. So there's something coming towards the end of the month. What it is, we don't know. But if we take a look at this, this is the MJO ensembles. And uh, if we look at the MJO, notice what it gets into here. This is phase eight, okay? So this is the GFS. This is the European phase eight by March 2nd, March 2nd. So what does that mean in terms of the actual pattern? This is the pattern in February in phase eight. Again, you can see strong, or severe Arctic os negative Arctic oscillation, a negative NAO, and a possible East Coast big low there in that dark blue if, if we go into late February in phase eight. Now, if we go into fe phase eight in early March, same sort of thing. Convoluted pattern, strongly negative Arctic oscillation, NAO, a big possible East Coast storm in early March. So the MJO is really getting on this, and that's another reason to think something the last several days of February, the first couple of days of March is coming, something significant. Maybe two or three of them. Two moderate storms, maybe one moderate, one big storm. We'll have to see. And then as we go towards the end of the period, look what happens early March. Boom, the pattern collapses. And we get a little bit of a, still some cooling here, but we're getting a little bit of flow like this. And this flow coming in this way here, or I think one of my arrows, so you can see this, like this. But this is the whole ridge is breaking down, as you can see that. And that means the pattern turns mild again as we go maybe after March 7th and March 8th. And that's because of the PNA going up and down and up and down and up and down, and the pattern breaking down and shifting that way. So anyway, that's this week in weather for February 16th. I'm your host, meteorologist DT, and the point here is, again, we'll see how the cold pattern returns around the next weekend and the possibility for a, maybe a Midwest snowstorm and then maybe a more significant East Coast snowstorm by the end of the month, a very close to the end of the month, and maybe even something in March, early March as well. This is DT. I'll talk to you soon.